So I'm Romain Coulon from the BIPM. I would like first to thank you, Brian, and the workshop committee from, for giving me the opportunity to give a talk today. The only aim of my presentation is to show you how active is um, the metrology community to address the challenge of nuclides of interest to medicine and not limited to, to alpha therapy. In the first part of my presentation, um, I will uh, give you some um, element of context. I will repeat many aspects already uh, uh, presented by Brian, but I believe it's not too bad to repeat things, to clearly sit uh, the stage. Um, to make an image, the medical practitioner injects the just necessary activity to the patient in order to obtain images with enough contrast. So it's a qualitative purpose, and it's quite important to have a good traceability chain for that, a good trust on the activity measurement. If we move now to target therapy and diagnostic, here, the activity injected to the patient is directly is linked to the dose delivered to the patient tumor and metastasis. So maybe if in the future we would like to move to uh, dosimetry, um, the activity could become an input quantity uh, which could be used to plan treatment or for other business discussed today. So it's a more quantitative purpose that uh, impose more stress on the trust we should have on the activity measurement and to the whole traceability chain to the direct SI unit, the per um, So um, for that, the community is, uh, will have us to tackle this challenge. And here I remind the, the pyramid of the traceability at the bottom of the pyramid, we can find the radiopharmacies and the clinics. They can measure the in situ uh, the activity using a calibrator, or they can purchase a um, standard from a secondary calibration laboratory. At the second level of the pyramid, we can find the supplier of calibrator and also the secondary calibration laboratory. Both of them need to be traceable to a primary standard maintained by a National Metrology Institute. National Metrology Institutes have the responsibility uh, to realize the unit Becquerel. And at the top, at the international level, the BIPM, the CAPM, and the Regional Metrology Institutes are here to coordinate this effort and to ensure that we have a good equivalence of all the becquerel that are realized around the world. And for that, key comparison is a tool to uh, assess this. The framework uh, under which uh, international equivalence of measurement standard is uh, demonstrated is the CIPM mutual recognition arrangement, the CIPM MRA, signed in 1999. It gathered today 250 institutes, and key comparison is one uh, of the manner, is maybe the most straightforward way to assess this international equivalence of measurement standard. The BAPM maintain a database in which we are publishing calibration and measurement capabilities, the CMCs, and CMCs um, allows for a laboratory to demonstrate its capability to realize, uh, in our case, the Becquerel, for instance, for a given medium and a given branch of activity. Um, running a key comparison is a hard task, requiring the shipment of radioactive solution, sample preparation, and carrying out measurement with state-of-the-art technique. So to optimize the process, we have set up the measurement method matrix, the MMM, 
and the MMM allows for a single measurement comparison to support CMCs for several radionuclides using the same primary method with a similar or a lower level of difficulty, which means with one key comparison result, we can obtain CMCs for several uh, radionuclides. Key comparison can be piloted by three entities. First, the BIPM through centralized services, the SIR, the CRT, and the ESIR. I will uh, talk in detail later. The second body is the regional metrology organization, so AFRIMET, IPMP, COMET, RAMET, GERFMET, and SIM. And finally, the consultative committee for ionizing radiation section two, uh, which can also organize comparison through a 10 year plan uh, uh, for the strategic radionuclide. If you look at now on the graph here, you can see that the BIPM provides an important support in, to the effort of key comparison. And uh, it's a chance we have because it's not for every quantities that the BIPM um, hosts such services. And this benefit to the metrology community, but, or, but also to the end user, such as for medical application we are discussing today. So please, be aware of this chance. Here in this slide, I would like to convince you of um, the unique interest of BIPM key comparison. The, in my opinion, um, there is two assets. Um, this kind of comparison are centralized and continuous. They are centralized in the sense that a laboratory can send a standard to the BIPM whenever he wants with a measurement certificate. The BIPM then measures the standard in its centralized system to thereafter produce a degree of equivalence, which is published through a graph of degrees of equivalence you can uh, see here uh, as an illustration. And each of these points permits to a laboratory to demonstrate its capability to realize the Becquerel for a given radionuclide and a given medium. A degree of equivalence is the deviation between the activity evaluated by the laboratory to the international consensus, which is a key comparison reference value, the KCRV, which is a kind of an average gathering all the results uh, accumulated so far. And here comes the second asset of BIPM key comparison, because we are we have a continuous operation, which means that the KCIV is continuously refined to obtain um, very um, uh, precise KCIV and relevant degrees of equivalence. And this is not possible for key, key comparison organized with other body, where. Um, the KCRV is limited, is um, valid for a limited period of time. Now, this is uh, all three uh, centralized services. The first one is the International System of Reference, called the SIR, established in 1976. It is based on ionization chambers and a specific approach allowing this continuous operation meaning that we can produce a reference value valid for decades. It has produced today 788 independent results for 72 radionuclides emitting gamma rays. In 2009, the CRT was launched to address short-lived radionuclides and laboratories far from the BIPM, because for this one, um, we can't uh, ship the solution due to the radioactive decay. The CRT is uh, then a well-type sodium iodine detector, which is shipped to the laboratory to realize the measurement and to deliver a degree of equivalence. The CRT can provide today uh, degrees of equivalence for many nuclides used uh, in nuclear medicine. So it's a very important tool for the topic of today. And we, have, we are very pleased uh, to uh, start this year our third services, which is an extension of the SIR, uh, which aim to 
to address all the other radionuclides that cannot be measured by the two previous systems, and this concerns mainly the pure beta emitters. It is based on a liquid saturation counter and the primary standardization called the triple to double coincidence ratio, which is used again to obtain this continuous operation. Now I have um, introduced you to the context about uh, the, and show you the interest of a key comparison. I will move to the second part of my presentation to give you the picture of what is the level of international equivalence we have achieved for standard used in radiopharmaceuticals. I will start with SPECT radionuclides. They are typically electron capture decaying radionuclides that emit gamma rays in the range of 100 to 300 keV, allowing the radiation to go outside the body to form an image. They are standardized typically by X-ray or OJ coincidence or OT coincidence counting. And the BIPM services that can be used are typically the SIR and the CRT. There are many uh, drugs uh, in use and the main one is a technetium 99M produced from Molybden 99 generator. It's a short-lived one. And for this one, we have uh, today achieved a um, very high level of international equivalence of the standard with 34 uh, CMCs claimed by laboratories supported by 13 degrees of equivalence. You can see on the right, the plot of degrees of equivalence with uh, the SIR results in red obtained before 2009. And after 2009, uh, this, the, 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 there are all the results obtained with our transportable system, the CERTI. And you can see um, uh, that it's remarkable, um, the remarkable benefit of the CERTI, which has provided uh, many degrees of equivalence for many laboratories around the world. There is also a good um, achievement of international equivalence of the standard for the thallium 201, the gallium 67, and the indium 111, while supported by a full number of degree of equivalence. Concerning the iodine 123, which is used to image the nervous system and, of course, the thyroid, there is today 15 uh, CMCs claimed by laboratories but no more degree of equivalence to support these, uh, these capabilities. Uh, because they were degrees of equivalence, but a degree of equivalence uh, is valid for a period of 20 years. And we did new uh, degree of equivalence today. But um, we will soon uh, reestablish the demonstration of, of uh, equivalence by key comparison because there is three coming results that will be soonly published and two other planned comparison. Now concerning PET nuclides, they are uh, positron decaying radionuclides. They have the particularity to um, be all with a very short half-life below one day. So the CRT is particularly important for all these one. They can be standardized by beta gamma coincidence and OT coincidence counting. On the market, we can find the fluorine 19, the copper 64, the carbon 11, and the gallium 68. For the two first one, the fluorine and the copper, we have achieved a good level of international equivalence of the standard with mini CMCs supported by mini degrees of equivalence. On the right, you can see the plot of degrees of equivalence for these two one, with again, the result obtained by the SIR result in red and the result obtained by our transportable instrument CRT in blue. Um, <clears throat> concerning the carbon 11 and the gallium 68, there are some uh, CMCs, but no direct support from key comparison. Uh, concerning the uh, carbon 11, we have one key comparison result from the Canadian laboratory NRC, but it's not enough to produce a KCIV and a degree of equivalent because with it, we need at least two results. But we will soon be able to uh, demonstrate the equivalence of the standards because uh, there are two planned uh, comparisons in the coming years. 
For all the other uh, under investigation uh, for uh, PET, uh, the iodine 124, the terbium 152, the scorium 44, the manganese 32, and many others, there are very few or no CMCs, and of course, no uh, comparison result. Now I, I move now to teragnostic, and I start it here with beta therapy plus SPECT. There are beta minus decaying radionuclide that can be standardized by beta gamma coincidence or anti coincidence counting. The BIPM service to provide equivalence are typically the SIR and the CRT. M mainly the SIR uh, for now because um, they are typically with a period of several days for most of them. In use, we can find the iodine 123 to image and treat the theoried, the lithium 177 to image and treat the endoanthropine tumors, and the samarium 153 to treat and image bone cancers. For the two first one, we have a good level of international equivalence with many CMCs and many degrees of equivalence. You can see two illustration on the top right, the plot of degree of equivalence for the lutetium uh, one, uh, 177, uh, with in red uh, the result from the SIR, with the recently uh, result uh, obtained from the Switzerland laboratory IRA, and you can see also in blue uh, the, compar the linked comparison uh, coming from a comparison piloted by the CCRI section 2 in 2009. Concerning the samarium 153, there are some CMCs, but uh, no uh, degree of equivalence to demonstrate uh, this international equivalence. But we are tackling uh, this challenge with uh, two coming results with the SIR from two laboratories and one coming result with the CRT. So, which means that uh, the CRT which will be linked to the fixed SIR and will be able to travel uh, around the world to provide equivalence. So, there is also free plan comparison with the CRT. So, in the coming years, we uh, will certainly be able to demonstrate a strong international equivalence uh, for this one. For all the other, which are at the preclinical stage, Concerning the silver 111, the scandium 44, the copper 67, the ormium 166, there is no CMCs or very few and no key comparison. But for the terbium 161, we have recently obtained the two first results. Um, you can find on uh, the plot on the bottom on the bottom here with a result from the Switzerland laboratory IRA and a result from the British laboratory NPL. Now, um, with, uh, for alpha therapy plus image, they are by definition alpha decaying radionuclides. Uh, they can be standardized mainly by uh, liquid scintillation counting. And um, the service uh, in use at BIPM for the moment is the SIR. But uh, if there are some uh, short-lived ones, the CRT could be used in the future. And also, probably, uh, in the future, the extended SIR could be envisaged because, li because liquid saturation is quite convenient for alpha emitters. In use today, uh, we can find the radium-223 to treat and image bone metastasis. And we are pleased to have recently published the four first degrees of equivalence for this radionuclide, this alpha therapy radionuclide. And all these points are consistent uh, within plus minus 2%. For all the other ones, uh, which are under investigation, the thorium-227, the astanat-211, the bismuth isotope, and the terbium-149, there is no CMCs and no key comparison results. But for the actinium-225, which is uh, uh, close to be uh, used in clinic to treat uh, uh, many cancers such as uh, meloid malignic senses, uh, we, are, we have recently published uh, two first degrees of equivalence with a result from the German laboratory PTB 
and the Poland Laboratory Polatome. And um, it's uh, an, uh, an isotope for which, in which the community is very active with one coming result, which will be soon published, one plan comparison, and also a comparison plan uh, to be piloted by the CCRI section two. I will finish by OG and beta therapy. They are uh, electron capture or beta decaying radionuclides. They can be standardized by liquid saturation counting and model-based approach. And here, the BIPM system SIR and CRT uh, cannot be used in the absence of X-ray or gamma rays. But our new system, the ESIR, is perfectly suitable to uh, address this uh, kind of nuclide. In news, uh, we can find the yttrium 90 from strontium 90 generator to treat hepatic cancer, the strontium 89 to treat bone cancer, and also the phosphorus 32. For these three, uh, we, uh, there is many CMCs uh, claimed by laboratories, but no uh, comparison result to demonstrate this equivalence. But with our new system, we hope in the coming years be able to demonstrate this equivalence of standard uh, through comparison results. In conclusion, I hope in this uh, uh, short presentation showing you um, the very um, that the metrology community is very active uh, to establish traceability of nuclide of interest to medicine, to, to medicine, notably through key comparison. And I would like also to emphasize that uh, the uh, BIPM measurement service are a great support to this. The SIR and the CRT provide an active support to on-market spec nuclide, technetium 99M, thallium 109, gallium 67, and indium 111, the on-market PET nuclide, fluorine 80, and copper 64, and the CRT will soon produce equivalents for iodine 123 and carbon 11. The our historical system, the SIR, provides today an active support to the teragnostic nuclide. For beta therapy prospect, the indium 131, the lutetium 177, and the recently uh, result obtained for the terbium 161. Concerning alpha therapy uh, prospect, we have recently published the first result for the radium 223 and the actinium 225. And the CRCRT will soon also produce equivalents for the samarium 153. Also, uh, the new uh, service, the ESIR, is ready to evaluate equivalents for beta therapy nuclides only, uh, the strontium 89, the yttrium 90, and the phosphorus 32. I thank you very much for your attention.